Earlier this spring, Teddy and I went through a training session at the Glen Club at the Kinetic Performance Center. It was an amazing experience that went well beyond a normal lesson plan. So I'm going to have you look at that shape as you see it there. Okay, and then I'm going to have you, in your mind, flip it end over end to your right. Okay. And I want you to rebuild the shape. All right. 30 seconds. Go. Problem solving. Vision. When you're staring at this orange bead, mm -hmm. do those two strings converge before, on, or after it? I see two orange beads, so the conversion is after. Put them on top of each other, and then look at me through the circle. Depth perception. So I want you to try to walk over there blindly and try to drop the ball on top of the hole. Ah, how about it? I got the roll. <laughs> I was figuring 27 feet, so nine paces. Okay. And uh, I guess I was pretty close, so that's good. That's a pretty mathematical approach. I think I'd do it much differently. I'd probably be a lot more feel-oriented. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test uh, you know, physical screening, how okay. well we balance, how well we stabilize, how well we move in our current body state. As if golf isn't hard enough, Rick Silva of Kinetic Performance Center shows me and Teddy why the flaws in our games aren't that easy to fix. Feel the music. <laughs> the assessment is a long one, and Rick does all of this before we even hit one shot. <sighs> That's all I got. I've never seen either one of you swing a golf club. But just based off of that physical screen that Eric and I just put you through, I can pretty much tell you what you're going to do in your golf swing, and I've never seen it. What we're going to do now is we're going to get, gather some, uh, some ball data uh, and some uh, just elementary club data on how your clubs and, and the golf ball is currently performing. So Rick, as you can see, we gathered a bunch of, uh, of data on, on how your golf ball's flying and, and, uh, and the current equipment you're using. So that's just going to go into your file and give us a, another baseline or another piece of the puzzle to how we can help you. Okay. So let's go over and get you on 3D. Great. But the main attraction at KPC is this, a high-tech, futuristic suit straight out of the Matrix. I can't wait to see how bad I look in 3D. It shows us where we can both improve in the real and virtual worlds. This is amazing. All right, Teddy, this is your golf swing. This is actually you right here. So what we're able to do is we are able to look at this on any frame or any angle we want to. So it really kind of takes 2D video to a whole new level. Teddy's an athletic guy, He's six foot two, I believe, six foot three, somewhere around there. When you watch him, just visually watch him, I wouldn't say he's got the greatest golf swing in the world. Um, and I don't think he would be upset if I said that. You know, he tends to fall off balance a lot. Um, he tends to, to carve the ball a little left to right, like, like most golfers tend to do. Because of what we saw in Teddy's efficiency charts and what we saw in his body, we have a very, very, very clear concept of where we've got to go with him. He's actually quite efficient, even though he looks a little awkward in his motion. One of the things that Rebecca said is that she doesn't get a lot of power. Um, that she, that's something she's been striving for her whole golfing life. Um, and we really kind of turned a key in finding why that is today. Even after the screen, that immediately we could tell that there was a, there was a big spotlight right there, uh, you know, from a pelvis section, um, glutes, that kind, of, that kind of area. That's where things were really, really lacking from a, a stability standpoint and also the ability to, to turn those muscles on and really engage in a golf swing.